Do you worry about being in a campground and then, uh-oh, something breaks in your motorhome or your travel trailer? Well, I'm gonna share some options and some tips for you next. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz, I'm a full-time RVer. I've been traveling the country for the last four years, and you probably know I'm on a mission to hit 100,000 subscribers. So thank you for helping me get a little bit closer each day. So what do you do if you're out far from home, you're in a campground and then the furnace breaks or you don't have any air conditioning or no hot water? Well, you could pack everything up and go to a dealer, but most dealers will keep you waiting weeks, if not months. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to find a good mobile RV tech, and the emphasis is on good, because we've all heard horror stories of repairs gone wrong. Well, I was in Tucson and I knew I needed a good repair person to come to my campsite. I had just purchased my motorhome about a month before and I had a long list of things I needed to get done, some upgrades and repairs. So I decided I wanted to kind of test the repair person and give him something easy first and just kind of make sure that he's gonna do a good job before giving him more complicated things. I wanted to have my roof vent replaced, it was cracked. So he goes on the roof and he says, hey, your fan blade is broken, I keep extra ones of those on board, I can switch that out. After he replaced the vent, he came inside my motorhome with a vacuum and he started vacuuming the screen. So I was really impressed. So how do you find a good repair person if you're on the road, you're miles from home, you don't know who to ask? I can tell you who not to ask. Don't ask the campground manager. Most likely she has an agenda. If you look at your campground map, there probably are some mobile RV people listed there and she's gonna direct you to them because those people are paying the campground to advertise and so the campground manager is likely gonna wanna give them business. And that's the other thing. For most RV techs, they're gonna be busy enough that they don't need to advertise at all. They do word of mouth. That is a good way to find a good repair person is to ask your neighbors. But don't just ask one person. I asked about six people. I'd ask my neighbor, hey, do you know of a good mobile RV tech? And I'd hear, you know, Bob's repair or Acme repair, but that was it. So I kept asking. I didn't wanna just hear a name, I wanted more. Now, if I heard the same name six times, I was gonna feel pretty good about that. Well, when I asked my neighbor across the street for a good RV tech, he said, oh, you want David, David with Allery Mobile RV Service. He said, he's the best. I've had neighbors raving about him. He does really good work. One of my neighbors last year had him back several times and she couldn't stop talking about what a good job he did. And I thought, great, that's who I'm gonna call. Now it's okay if a mobile RV person doesn't answer during business hours. In fact, I don't want them to answer. When they're here working on my rig, I don't want them answering the phone, I'm paying them by the hour, right? As long as they call me back during the day or by the end of the day or maybe first thing the next morning, I'm fine with that. It's a red flag if they say, oh, I can come today, tomorrow, anytime next week, I'm completely open. Again, a good RV service person is going to be completely booked for the next few days, maybe even a week out. But if you have an emergency, they should fit you in. I think that's really important because if you don't have any heat in the winter or any air conditioning in the summer, or if you've got some kind of emergency and maybe you can't get a slide in, a good RV tech will work you in. It's really important to me that they arrive when they say they will, especially if I'm the first call of the day. Now I understand how things go. They may not know how long a job's gonna take that's before me, so they might be a little bit late. But if I'm the first call, by gosh, they better be there. So in David's case, he said, I'm gonna be there at 7 a.m. And I was like, okay, we'll see about that. No one's gonna show up at 7 a.m. Particularly where I was in Tucson, I was kind of out in the boonies a little bit. Well, you know what? At 6.55, the sun hadn't even risen yet, David shows up. That builds trust. If they do what they say they're gonna do, that's a good sign. Back when I had a house, I was getting renovations done and I was looking for a contractor and someone told me, look for someone who's about 45 years old with a nice truck. And Dave is a little younger than 45, but he does have a nice truck. I definitely don't have a good feeling about someone showing up in a beater van or a car to do repairs. You need a truck with tools and parts. A good RV repair person is going to have the common parts on board. So you don't have to wait for parts. He's gonna have that and be able to do it right then. When you think about all that could go wrong in your motorhome or travel trailer, you need a good RV person that will work on the roof, 
They can do electrical, plumbing, work on the slides, the fridge, the stove, oven, hot water, propane, air conditioning. I mean, there's a lot, and I think the best tech can do it all. So after David did the roof vent, he came back and did more work. Remember, I had just bought the motorhome. So he installed the door lock, a new inverter, new backup camera. He fixed my hot water tank and he recoded the slide roofs. So that was a lot. You want an RV tech that's courteous and easy to work with. I mean, you don't want to work with someone who's rude and difficult, moody, whatever. In some of the work that David did, he had to consult with me to make sure that he was doing what I wanted him to do. So there was a lot of collaboration to make sure that my vision and his vision matched. Attention to detail and going the extra mile is also really important. When David installed my backup camera, he didn't like that the wires were exposed to the weather and he recommended that he fabricate a piece of metal to protect them. You know, aesthetics are really important to me. When he installed the new inverter, it came with a dash controller that wasn't going to fit where the old one was, so he cut out a piece of wood, painted it black, and got the new controller to fit in the space of the old controller. I also appreciate how if David saw something that needed to be done, he would do it. When he was here to pressure wash the roof, I asked him if he would also pressure wash this area on the engine. So before I owned the motorhome, there were some mice living on the engine and the evidence of mice was still there and I wanted him to just pressure wash that off. Well, not only did he do that, he just went ahead and cleaned the whole engine. That gets a gold star from me. That's the thing about finding a good repair person. A good repair person will really care. David had already told me he was booked up for the whole week and then my neighbor came over and she had an emergency. She had no hot water. Well, he went over and he took care of it real quick for her and that speaks volumes. And now he has become her repair person for life. So, I mean, that's how you grow your business. I also look for someone who admits to being wrong or is fair about things. So if you have been watching my videos for a while, you know that when I bought this motorhome, I had a really hard time getting the surge protector unplugged from the power cord. So I decided to install it in my power compartment where I keep the, the power cord. Well, David had a really hard time with the plug that he got and it just wouldn't, it wouldn't do what it's supposed to do. And he said, you know, I'm not going to charge you for an hour. I'm going to give you an hour credit because it shouldn't have taken that long. And I really appreciate that, which brings me to tip and tell. If you find a really good RV tech, like I found with David Allery, absolutely tip them if they do a good job for you and tell your neighbors. Spread the word because most of them, that's how they get their business is through word of mouth. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and tell me your repair stories. I'd love to hear the good and the bad and the crazy, right? Well, thank you for watching, and as always, these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing.